I'm Janice Cortez. Let's begin with the example of my still life painting, An Evening with Vincent, and take a closer look at the work that inspired it, Vincent van Gogh's The Starry Night. Vincent spent a year at an asylum near Saint Remy, France, and produced some of his most memorable paintings during that stay. The Starry Night was among those he completed there, and it is my favorite. It shares his astonishing perceptions of the heavens and the natural world more eloquently than all the scores of letters he wrote to his brother Theo, explaining in words the work he was doing and the intensity of his vision. His creativity came into full bloom during that protected year in San Remy, and the inner demons that plagued him were stilled for a while. In my evening with Vincent, his haunting nocturne sets the stage for a simple, intimate sharing of some bread and fruit and a glass of wine. The soft interior light on the patterned wall suggests refuge, safety, like that which Vincent found at San Remy. And we know from the reports of his contemporaries that he could be an amiable and engaging conversationalist in his times of wellness. So I imagine inviting him to join us. The sunflowers on the bookcase serve not only as reminders of the flowers that Vincent famously loved, but also as indicators of high summer. The ripe fruit proclaims the season too. And the sleepy village depicted in his painting implies the peace of a magical summer night. One can almost hear the crickets chirping outside the open window as we sit down to talk with Vincent. His starry night makes effective use of the swirling shapes he saw in the night sky. But don't overlook the compositional importance of all those little stars and of the quarter moon, each represented in circles of light that dance across the dark rectangle of his canvas. Their rhythm and scale inspired me to continue their cheerful path in my own painting. Notice the continued employment of circles in the faces of the sunflowers and their vase, the round shapes of the loaf of bread, the grapes, the ripe peach, and the bright spots within the bookcase. The anchoring stop sign effect of the round clock face declares the hour, while it echoes the disk of the moon above it. The shelf below the lamp displays books about the south of France, the place where Vincent finally flourished after longing to find what he called a different light. Present, too, are books about Vincent himself and about the art being created by his contemporaries. His self-portrait with a felt hat graces the spine of one book, while Renoir's Girl Reading and Cezanne's Flowers in a Vase appear on others. A golden detail from Vincent's last painting, Wheat Fields Under Threatening Skies with Crows, shines from a book spine at the lower left of the dark bookcase. In his own time, and shortly thereafter, Vincent's unique work was tossed into the catch-all category of Neo-Impressionism, a name that tells us nothing of the work's unclassifiable originality and power. Today, as they did then, Vincent's paintings and drawings communicate his passionate vision boldly, withstanding the tests of time with incandescent honesty and grace. It's an honor and a pleasure to have his company. And it's been my pleasure to have yours. I hope we'll see you again soon. If you enjoyed this episode of Demystifying the Masters with Janice Cortez, like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. If you are an art collector planning to enhance your collection, we invite you to view more of the Cortez work at JaniceCortez.com.